so according to an analyst even a price cut is not going to help boost Wii U sales <sighs> well it's not really that surprising is it Ugh. but before we get to this video let's get to the question of the day Alright, so stay tuned to the end of this video to find out the answer to the question of the day. Alright, so let's talk about some Wii U. And, well, it's an analyst. This guy's name is Pactor. I think I've mentioned him before because they always bring him up um, on GameSpot. You know, they always refer to him and... I, I, he's generally... I generally agree with him. I mean, right now he's talking about how in March... The Wii U sales were probably at around 55,000, you know, so <laughs> not even as much as the February sales of the Wii U, which was around 64,000. 55,000, that's his estimation. Wow. And March was actually, uh, you know, a big month for video games, too. I dare say that it was, you know, March is like the biggest month of the year when it comes to gaming releases. A lot of, like... Triple A games come out, a lot of blockbuster, highly anticipated games, a lot of uh, big franchises, and you know, just take a look at the the year. You know what I mean? Um, and all the games released the whole year, and look at every month and compare it. March has a massive amount of games to come out compared to April, compared to February, compared to January. Every like, and that's just the first quarter compared to the summer. You know what I mean? The only thing comparable would be like in the fall, so around like October, November, that you know December time, uh, uh, the, the release. But so essentially, what Packer was saying is that even cutting the Wii U's price, which is around three hundred dollars for the basic model, three fifty for the uh, other model, is uh, it's not going to help boost the sales. Uh, you know, it's not going to. <laughs> it's not going to change people's minds, basically. It's not going to convince a lot of people. Um, so let's talk about what he actually said. The only key hardware device to underperform our expectations was the Wii U numbers. It's unlikely to improve for several months, even if Nintendo decides to drop the price, as there are an insufficient number of core titles that are generating interest in the console. Ah, uh, yes, the whole argument about not having enough games for it. Which is very legitimate. We've been talking about this, and this is generally true. You know, the Wii U has uh, a lot of games, a lot of publishers are skipping on the Wii U and not putting out games for it. Alright, there's a long list of games, a lot of established franchises not coming out for the Wii U. And this has been a consistent problem. It's getting kind of sad actually it's been several months now that this system has been out my gosh all right but yeah it needs a blockbuster to boost the sales uh, it needs something big and there could be the, the only sign of hope right now are the first party titles and the Nintendo exclusives right uh, Legend of Zelda game coming uh, coming up Wind Waker HD remake coming up uh, a Yoshi game, a Mario game, and Mario Kart. Only thing is that it's more of the same fucking names, you know? It's the same brands of titles. A, a Yoshi game, holy shit, didn't see that coming. Oh, oh, A Legend of Zelda? Wow, I must be a psychic because, wow, I, th that's got to be a seer uh, type of prediction right there. It's got to be so... Uh, that one, you know, I, I couldn't predict that uh, if you gave me a thousand guesses a, a legend of zelda a new legend of zelda or a new mario kart you know Ugh. it's frustrating because you know you want the system to do well but here's the problem with the wii u too is that the people that actually play it and like it are nintendo fans to begin with people that like these games now personally i do enjoy a lot of these titles but the thing is, I've experienced it before. I've been there and done that. What is the new thing that they're doing? What's the fresh new killer app that Wii U has? That's completely different, that isn't Mario, that isn't Mario Kart, or any, or, you know, 
not a non Legend of Zelda. And I think that's what people are looking for. You know, they want variety. They want uh, a certain level of uh, a bigger library, like more different types of gameplay, instead of just platformers, kart racing, action adventure that we've seen before with the same faces, the same characters. You know, I mean, how many people get tired of uh, have mentioned that God of War has been running to the ground? You know. I mean, Sony gets the heat, you know, and even Microsoft gets heat for, oh, an, an, another fucking Halo game? Fuck that. Of course, third-party developers get it, too. Uh, Activision get it all the time. Uh, well, they're the publisher, but, you know, they get it with the Call of Duty stuff. Alright, you know, EA with their Madden or oh, every time, and, you know, they always get the heat. Um, why is... Nintendo, like, no, nobody mentions that it's always the same shit with Nintendo, the same names. You know, but then when it's other companies, and that's the pro- that's the- That's like the main fucking problem that I have with these sycoph- sycophantic idiot fans of- of the fuck- Not even fans, but like, again, the, the sycophants, the motherfucking sheep that follow like one system one company just because oh I like this franchise I like this fucking brand you know give me something a little bit more unique and different and fresh and innovative instead of just the same things <sighs> alright but uh, regardless all of that um the, he, you know Pactor also mentioned how gamers are more likely to focus on the PS4 and the 720, or the new Xbox, uh, because it's there's just this perception, this perceived notion, right, that the Wii U will be severely limited by the by the uh, the 720 and the PS4 being more capable devices. So, uh, I mean. Whatever that means, whatever, you know, more capable as in maybe more powerful, okay. Probably, it's probably a guarantee that, holy shit, 720 PS4 are just much more uh, stronger systems, more memory, better graphics, etc. And uh, more, I don't even want to mention like the little stupid things that they could add on to it, like, you know, touchpad or whatever the hell it is, you know, the motion sensors and all that stuff. That's that's definitely a you know a very very good percent like a very fucking threatening thing against Nintendo is that well you got the Wii U but it's more like a current gen system it's more like the 360 PS3 it's not gonna be a it's already a weaker system compared to the specs of the PS4 and the 720 is probably gonna be far stronger as well in comparison to the Wii U so why even bother with it um. Yeah, the, the Wii U sales may continue to stagnate. Should the new consoles from Sony and Microsoft be price competitive? So there's even this notion that maybe uh, Microsoft and Sony are also willing to maybe lower the price close to the uh, Wii U price as well. So it's kind of like, again, that price com competition, very comparable prices where it's like, okay, what's spend 350 on a Wii U 32 gig or fucking spend that on a 720 instead? In a world, um, I, that's it, man. That's all you. Uh, that's all this article has, and it's very curious uh, listening to the fans, though, like the people that reply in the comment section, because you know you get all the fans, you get the the Nintendo owners, you get the uh, the people who are criticizing Nintendo. So you get it from all different uh, points of view. I want to read some of their comments right now. Okay, so this is from, uh, I don't even know this guy, something basic. All Nintendo has to do to regain their fans would be to have an HD Mario Galaxy, HD Zelda, HD Donkey Kong Country, HD Smash Brothers, HD Metroid, etc. Nintendo is and has always been about their IP and casual gaming for the family, especially toddlers and grandparents. Uh, no, I, I disagree with that uh, because... It, they weren't always about fucking casual gaming. Uh, maybe in the past seven, eight years, maybe, you know, uh, since the Wii, basically. Um, maybe a little bit less than that. But 
ultimately, man, uh, I don't think it's about that. I think that n n there was a time when Nintendo was a hardcore gamer's fucking paradise. I mean, have you played a Super Nintendo, the original NES, the Game Boy? You know, those systems were filled with hard-ass games, man. They didn't... It wasn't just for the family. It was for fucking hardcore-ass gamers. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Just a person that wants more challenging shit. It, it wasn't as accessible as the games today on Nintendo. It's not a family fucking gaming casual shit. You know, they had games like Mortal Kombat 2. They had games like Chrono Trigger. Games like Ghosts and uh, yeah, Ghouls and shit like that, and Street Fighter 2, and like, you know, these relatively... You, you, you gotta know your way around a game in order to actually... You can't just pick it up, pick up and play these fucking games. Even if the Wii U was as powerful or even more powerful than the PS4 or Xbox 3... What? Uh, fucking... Yeah. I wish these people had better fucking uh, spelling. It got a bunch of retards typing in the comments. Anyway, people are going to buy games like Call of Duty or Battlefield on the other systems or on PC because of the built-in community to those platforms. Hardcore gamers who have a Wii U most likely already own a PS4 or... Why do you keep putting Xbox 3, you fucking idiot? It's PS4 or 720. Or are you trying to fucking mention the PS3 in this 360? This this guy's an idiot, okay? Uh, pl plemmed basic, you're a jackass. Fuck off. God damn it, man. I just wasted my fucking time reading idiot comment. Anyway, let's keep going. Alright, what else do we have here? Nah, I don't want to read that Monster Hunter 3. What the fuck is that? Oh, the Raider Nation said... I'll ask the obvi obvious question. Where are the first party blockbuster titles? I really felt Nintendo had to release a few top first party games like a new Zelda, Mario Galaxy to have a successful launch with sales. Could you imagine if Nintendo released a Skylanders type Pokemon experience? I've grown up with Nintendo, but it's safe to say it's time for them to change up their strategies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And the guy responded, somebody responded, Coco Pierrot said, to me, they killed themselves with the N64 and, and live on nostalgia since then. That's a really good point. The N64 was a very fucking disappointing system. I had it, and I got rid of it, man. That thing fucking sucked. It didn't completely suck. It had a few classic games, like Conquer. Alright, that was great. And, uh... I don't know. Mario Kart 64 was great. Uh, Ocarina of Time. I mean, these are classics, but... You can only have a handful amount of fucking games. Like, I could count maybe in one hand the number of games that I loved on the N64. You know, it, that system was so disappointing. Uh, it was too fucking limited. It didn't have a lot of titles. It was a very, uh, how do you say? It just didn't have the library of like the PlayStation 1 back then. You know, they didn't take as many fucking risks. There was just not as many great games on it. Uh, the fucking cartridge thing was outdated by 1996, 97. You know, I mean, limited memory. You know, the music fucking sucked on a lot of the fucking thing. The quality, uh, the sound quality rather, because everything had to be like this MIDI bullshit file. It couldn't have like CD quality uh, type music in there because, again, the, the you know, it's not a CD. Um, so there was various limitations to the N64, uh, just a lot of little problems with it. And yeah, they do live off of nostalgia, that's very true. But, I, they have a lot of young fans too, I mean, you have a lot of, like, little kids that play the Wii and, and shit like that, the DS, because, there, it is a casual fucking, you know, system, you know, it's got a lot of these kiddie games now. Um... A lot of kiddified, family-friendly shit. Mario is family-friendly. You know, a lot of, uh, you know, Pokemon, you know, for kids. So, uh, you know. And then, okay, Gogo Hedray had another response. N64 started the downfall, but I think the GameCube really did them in. The Wii is killing Nintendo. It was so successful that they uh, thought... They could reproduce the results the same way. Of course, it didn't work. 
Oh shit, yeah, well, the GameCube, yeah, I mean, but I think by the time the GameCube came out, people have to realize these fucking systems, the way they came out, the feeling around it. Alright, so in the 90s, the Super Nintendo was a beast. It was fucking awesome, alright, it was Nin Super Nintendo against Sega Genesis. And for the early mid-90s, Super Nintendo dominated. I mean, it was just the fucking system to have. It was the best system, it had the best games, end of story. By the mid-late 90s, it was like, oh shit, Nintendo's starting to fall off because PlayStation came out. Sega Saturn, Sega tried, you know, um, and the fucking Nintendo, they tried with the N64, but PlayStation fucking dominated. PlayStation had better marketing, they had uh, more catchier fucking things, like the, the commercials were more uh, attractive. They had exclusives like... You know, Tomb Raider and fucking Crash Bandicoot, and I mean, I'm sure some of these games came out on the PC too. But the fucking PC was just computer, and not everybody had a goddamn computer, and not everybody wanted to, you know, play these games on the PC. So, in many respects, the original PlayStation was like the very first uh, console to really like fucking feature a lot of the PC style games as well. Um. So basically, PlayStation owned the fucking 3D, you know, mid-late 90s era of gaming. Uh, N64 kind of faltered a little bit, you know, they just weren't not nearly as good as the fucking Super Nintendo. I think that was part of the N64's downfall was the lack of great fucking games for it. You know, it just didn't have as many good games. It didn't have a big library like the Super Nintendo did. It didn't have the legacy of the Super Nintendo. Uh, Super Nintendo is a fucking massive tall mountain in comparison to the relatively like mediocre fucking hill that was N64 uh, in terms of quality of games the amount of games the fucking uh, the, the, the amount of uh, prestigiousness it had just not nearly as important not nearly as impressive I fucking laugh when people say that N64 is the most revolutionary system of the 90s what the fuck are you talking about? I mean, granted, yeah, it had four fucking slots, okay, it had really good graphics for its time, and it had the first person shooters like GoldenEye that introduced it to the fucking consoles and perfect dark and made it really good for consoles, but guess fucking what? That's about it. I mean, there's nothing on the fucking N64 that made it really stand out except for a few games. Uh, 3D game, okay, you know, Mario 64, uh, fucking Banjo-Kazooie was good, and all that shit was great, but fucking put it this way. All those games look like shit now, alright? They look like fucking turds, so the graphics didn't last, uh, it didn't age well. You know, the gameplay is, we've seen it now, like, where other systems did it just as good, or if not better. PlayStation 2, uh, you know... Xbox, the fucking GameCube, had that gameplay too. So, you have the kart racing thing, okay. Okay, well, Mario Kart 64 was great, but again, there's better kart racing games now. So, N64 is a fucking outdated system that, for its time, yes, it had some really good ideas. But it's, how the fuck is it revolutionary? Maybe in first-person shooters for the consoles? But then, it, fucking Xbox did it better with, with a Halo and the live internet access. You know, how many better first-person shooters are on fucking the original Xbox? Half-Life 2, uh, fucking the Halo games, uh, you know, maybe you can even argue games like Counter-Strike had a more uh, a lasting impact, you know? Fucking Unreal Championship, Doom 3, I mean, Jesus Christ. Not to mention the other games, you know, like Sniper Elite and fucking Black, you know, Time Splitters. So, whatever legacy the N64 had, it's done. It's, uh, it's an outdated system. It's over, man. All the good things about it, I think, is dated. It's, it's, I wouldn't fucking touch the N64 if you paid me, you know. Fuck that system. It was good for the 90s and for its time, but... It's not that great anymore. And it's certainly not the most like revolutionary system of the 90s. Give me a fucking break.
if anything, the most revolutionary system of the 90s was, it was two of them. I would say I would give it to the PlayStation, the original PS1, and the fucking Dreamcast. Alright, so this was the answer to the question of the day.